Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back, Kellen here again with Droid Life. So as you know, I've been at Google I.O. all day, finally broke away to show you the biggest announcement I think that came, and that is Android P hitting beta, or developer preview to whatever you want to call it. Android P is now in beta and it's available for Pixel, Pixel XL, Pixel 2, Pixel 2 XL. So I've got it here on the 2 XL, also on that XL. And there's just enough changes even over the original preview to dive in here and show you more. One thing in particular, and that's that little guy right there, you'll notice that navigation has changed. So Android is going through some pretty big changes and we got to show them off. Let's take a first look here at Android P beta. So we are gonna go ahead and start right there with that new navigation button. Um, but before we do, we actually have to go into settings and into system and gestures because it's actually not enabled out of the box. You'll see right there's a swipe up on home button option. That's actually how you enable it. So when you first flash this Android P beta, it still looks like this. You still have back home and apps. You actually have to turn that on. So it's kind of a weirdly named gesture, but that is how you get into it. So how does it work? Well. Uh, it is still a home button, so you can tap on it, you can long press on it, and that gets you into assistant. So all that stuff still works. It, it is a touchable home button. Uh, but where it changes is, like, let's say I want to get into my app drawer. Well, if I swipe up, you'll notice the first time it brings me actually into a new app switcher where uh, I have now vertical scrolling cards and you know I can tap on one to get into that new app. Um, however, what if I do want to get into my app drawer? Well, you can see it's still there, so I can do a single swipe to get into that UI and then another swipe to get in there, or I can just keep swiping and that'll get me into my app drawer. So it, there is kind of some stuff to learn there. So I can keep scrolling or swiping, you see that and it gets me into my app drawer just like it used to, uh, but you can also do that little quick swipe and it'll get you into this UI. So something to learn. Um, and then of course I hit home to go back home. Um, one thing to keep in mind is like, let's say I'm in uh, this settings area and I wanna go to the other app I was just using. Remember we used to double tap on the app switcher. Well now you just take the little pill and kind of slide it over to the side. And I just slide it over to the right and it keeps jumping me in between just the last two apps I was using just back and forth. It's kind of a cool little trick. Uh, if I wanna go look at additional apps that uh, I have open, I just keep and press on this and I can just kind of pull it over to the right and it keeps scrolling. And it's just gonna keep scrolling through apps I have open until I find one that I want. And then it loads that up. So it is a pretty tricky little guy. Uh, now the other thing is you'll notice a back button. It shows up when you might need a back button. So it's not there from the home screen. And I'd imagine there'll be apps where it may just go away forever, but for the most part, you actually are gonna see that back button. You just tap on that and it works just like the old back button, but you'll notice at home, it's not there because there's nowhere to go back to. Um, so this is kind of it. You swipe up, you get into here, you can uh, swipe apps away by just swiping them upwards like that. Um, if you want something to be in multi-window, you actually tap on this little icon up here and it spreads out and says go to app info or you can do split screen with it then and then it goes into split screen and it lets you choose another app. Now I'm in split screen, just like you guys have been able to do for a while now. So that's how you get into split screen. Um, swipe up, there, there isn't much else to say. You can't swipe things down, but you can swipe them up to dismiss them. You'll notice if I, if I try to swipe down, it doesn't work. Um, when I swipe up though, you'll notice these icons are changing. So they're not the same icons I have here. If I swipe up, it's weird because the search bar actually flips over the icons. And these are actually app suggestions, which are basically the app suggestions you see at the top of the app drawer. So a lot of, a lot of stuff going on here to talk about, but that's basically how it works. But if I go into an app like say Chrome, uh, I just swipe over and it takes me into the last app I wanted to do. Um, I can also though, when I'm in this UI, swipe up from there. So when I'm in an app, it doesn't matter what app I'm in, let's say I am in Chrome, and I swipe up because I wanna go probably to an app that I've used recently, that's probably the quickest way to do it now. So it is a gesture button, so you can swipe on it from within an app. It doesn't have to just be from when you're at home. So. That's just a quick look at the gesture navigation. If there's other tricks in there or stuff we figure out, we'll let you know, but there's there's still some stuff we're gonna have to get used to, but overall it's kind of a fun little change. Moving on from that though, let's talk about some of the other stuff that's new that we're noticing so far. So suggested replies or something that Google suggested was coming in, uh, in Android P. So suggested reply is like if you're look at an email, you'll get some suggestions on maybe how to reply. Right now these are about the most basic things ever and I think they're there mostly just to show you how these could work, but you'll notice there's a yes, no, okay, he, he, and thanks. And if I tap on one of those like he, he, it then responds 
responds to that person, that's all it says. So it's not the greatest thing and it's not working in like Hangouts yet, uh, but that's kind of how that's working. So we are, we are noticing that. Um, just some other cosmetic changes. You'll know that, notice that the paginated quick tiles shortcut thing is back. This used to be just a single page in the first preview. Now it's back to being two pages, which I do appreciate. Um, if I, if I do this first swipe down, you'll notice there's like a giant LTE icon there. I, I don't remember that being there previously, but it's also quite large. Um, you'll notice up top there, that LTE icon is also quite enormous. They've changed the font there and it really lets me know that I'm on LTE. So that's also something. Um, if I were to uh, adjust my volume, let's say I have my ringer on and I wanna quickly um, mute my phone or turn it on to vibrate, they added another gesture where you do power and volume up at the same time and that actually turns your phone into vibrate. So it's kind of hard to see, but if I have this UI up and you'll watch when I press this, it switches that to vibrate. I don't know if that's the most groundbreaking change, but they did add that and they are talking about it quite a bit. Um, some other things here are adaptive brightness. So I'll actually go into settings to show you this a little bit better. Um, if we go into display, so adaptive brightness, which I feel like has been around for a long time, but Google's back to hyping it up a little bit. So adaptive brightness, um, it tries to learn more from you when you're adjusting brightness. So as you manually adjust it and tweak it, it tries to learn more. So you can, you can make your brightness brighter, you can make it not as bright, and it, it tries to learn from you throughout the day to make sure that brightness is where you want it at all times. It's just something they're really hyping right now. So anyways, there is that. Um, if we go into battery, so there is something called adaptive battery in Android P. Similar to adaptive brightness, it's just one of those things that tries to learn to make your phone run better, to get those last amounts of juice out of that battery. Um, you can see right there, it says to extend battery life, adaptive battery limits, battery for infrequently used apps. Your phone will learn how to use your apps over time. It does say though that notifications may be delayed for these apps. So if you don't use an app all the time, but you do want to get notifications from it, you may not want to use adaptive battery, or maybe you do and see how it works and kind of let it play out. Um, but that's another big thing. Google's trying to squeeze every last ounce of juice in Android P. Um, another thing we're doing is in do not disturb mode. So do not disturb mode is just becoming more and more advanced. So Google talked a lot about uh, basically being able to separate yourself from your phone more often. There's, in fact, there's a whole app suite coming with something called the dashboard. Um, there's something called wind down and there's something called app timers. These are all features that are there to let you unplug from your phone a little bit. Like wind down will slowly start turning your phone into a black and white mode so that hopefully you get annoyed and put it away. And then when you wake up in the morning, it's back to full colored. App timers, you can set timers on apps so that you just stop using them after a while or they block you out from using them. Um, that, that's kind of one of the big pushes. That's not in this preview yet. That is still coming. But Do Not Disturb is one of those areas where they did actually tweak it a little bit. And one of those things is blocking visual disturbances. So should visual disturbances like flashing lights, uh, your screen turning on when you get notifications, you can have it turn all that stuff off on Do Not Disturb. Because in, in Do Not Disturb mode previously, I believe all that stuff would still come through. It just wouldn't make noises at you. Now you can actually turn all that stuff off to be able to do that. So they're just giving you more power in do not disturb mode. Um, so far though, that, that's kind of it. We've got more stuff coming. Uh, you know, the camera's gonna get more powerful, lens is getting more powerful. There's some other stuff on the road, on the roadmap. Google News is brand new. I can actually show you what the Google News app looks like. It's starting to slowly roll out. It's right here, Google News. It does, I believe it does replace Google Play Newsstand. Um, and this is the new news app. It's got a For You section, which tries to bring up news that you might wanna read. It's got top headlines of the world. Uh, there's a section where you can favorite stuff. And then here is Newsstand, where I'd imagine you find your magazines and whatnot that you have subscribed to. So anyways, this is rolling on. Should be a huge update. There's some stuff going on, but the big thing is this is Android P beta. We've got new gesture navigation. It's out for both of these phones. It's also going to be able to going to be able to be flash on the Essential phone, OnePlus 6, a Nokia phone, a whole bunch of other phones are actually getting in on the beta action, and that's all thanks to Project Trouble. So Anyways, this has been a longer than it was supposed to be look at Android P beta. If you guys find other stuff or we find other stuff, we'll let you know, you let us know, that sort of deal. Uh, for now though, we're Droid Life. Peace.